Friendly greetings! I'm Torley Linden, and in this tip of the week, I'm going to show you and teach you all about advanced attachment adjustment. You can see my avatar is sort of a relaxed, neutral pose with my arms spread out wider. And right below, you can see I have some help. This is, let me turn the user interface back on. This is a posing stand. Now this one in particular is by Tormented Twilight. There are a lot out there. Some get very, very fancy, but this one was free and it's easily modifiable. And the nice thing, of course, is with the variety of choices, you can go to onres.com and slexchange.com. I recommend checking out both to look for posing stands. Now, what is a posing stand? You'll notice that it says I'm editing appearance. A posing stand puts me in a position where it's easy to adjust my attachments. So it, for example, if I get off the posing stand, stand up here, sometimes it's a bit tricky because if my avatar is moving or the arms aren't exactly symmetrical and other sorts of little trickiness, which can make it difficult to tell exactly where I'm moving something. This is why it's useful to use a posing stand. And most posing stands work if you right click and select stand or a similar command from the pie menu. And notice how I go right up there. It's also cool because it tells him editing appearance, which yes I am, but without the clutter of the big edit appearance menu, you'll, no you'll notice if I go to edit and appearance here, and that that is more for, see, this big window comes up and it's kind of clunky. And this is tends to be more for your body parts and attributes of your avatar mesh instead of attachments. Now what's the main difference? The main difference is attachments, as you recall earlier from a video tutorial if you've seen mine before, attachments happen to be objects, any object, but attachments in particular are designed to be worn on your avatar. And you can tell often they look like they're an extension, or if you're not sure, you can right click and you'll see the object glow and it'll give you an opportunity to edit this. Notice that doesn't happen when I right click on my avatar itself. It gives me the these regular options, but with an attachment, I can go ahead and I can edit it if I so choose. Now, let me show you something else. I'm going to show you how to find out how to, what's worn on your avatar, all the attachments and other sorts of clothing thingies. <laughs> so there are a couple basic ways. One is to go to the edit menu and right here, attach object or detach object. So you can see, you can choose what you want to detach if I want to take off something. And note that sometimes the first time you bring up this menu, it may appear a bit buggy. It's a, it's a bug that's been there a long time. It still bugs me, but if it does, just come back and then it should show up correctly. So more, and there's, there's a list of more stuff, various. These are the HUD slots, which are attachments that don't appear. Heads up display, that stands for it. They don't appear on your avatar, they appear on screen. I'll just to give you a very quick example of that. Not to get too distracted, but if I was to right click more and attach it to HUD, and top. So it always appears, it doesn't appear on my avatar, but it's something that stays on the screen and doesn't move around. It can be used as part of the interface. Let me just detach that. Ah, sidetracking is fun. <laughs> so in addition to this, you can go to inventory and in your inventory, you can search for the word worn with an open bracket beginning it, but don't use the close bra bracket. The reason why is because it shows everything you're wearing as you can see, but some parts are worn on different aspects of your body. So if you did a close bracket, that wouldn't be really effective. It wouldn't show everything, but this does. And all the attachments, they have an object icon. See, object icon, these all do. These do as well. They're all attachments. And if I were to right click them and detach them from myself, you would see my avatar look very sparse. It wouldn't look as cool without attachments. Yikes. I've only got one wing, one wing angel, ha, Sephiroth. Anyway, I've changed my avatar because next I'm going to show you a series of practical exercises of actual instances in Second Life where you're likely going to need to adjust your attachments. So good info to know. Before I go further, I'd like to emphasize the importance of backing, the importance rather, of backing up your attachments before you reposition or manipulate and edit and splice and remix and copy and paste them and all that. <laughs> You're going to want to have a backup because in, in case anything goes wrong, it'll save you and the creator the trouble of having to provide a replacement. 
It's good to have something. And while not all attachments can be backed up, if they're copyable, you certainly can. And if they're modifiable, even better. So for example, Harmony de Chanel, she gave me this nice necklace, which I'll be showcasing later. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's no modify and no transfer, but, but it is copyable. So I can right click it and copy it. And then I can right click again and paste it. And then shortly it'll appear as a copy. Now I can also right click and create a new folder and call it backup. That way I know that it's going to be the original that I didn't modify. I can click and drag that in. If something is modifiable, then you can rename it. So if I right click here and rename it. There's a bit of a wrinkle with this actually, however, because an object itself, like the prims, may be modifiable, but the stuff in the contents, like scripts, may, may not be. So in the inventory, it shows the most restrictive permissions of an object. It doesn't mean that all the parts of this are no modify, no transfer, but it does mean at least one part is. So quickly demonstrating this gotcha, if I click and drag this into the world, kind of a sneak peek of what's ahead here, and you see watermelon necklace, very nice. If I right click and edit it, you'll notice that in general, I can actually rename it because these prims themselves, primitive objects that make up the necklace, they are modifiable. So I can go ahead and rename this. Whoops, it's a bit long. You can see a backup will fit. Almost, yes it does. And I'll hit enter and then I can close this and then I can take it back into inventory. So long story short, sometimes you can rename stuff if you drag it in world, but you can't do that in your inventory. I can also put that in my backup folder. But first, a demonstration with fitting a hat. So this hat, specifically this fedora, I like it. It reminds me of Indiana Jones and it looks pretty cool from this angle here. I look very heroic. However, you'll notice if I really move over to the other side and look carefully, my hair is sticking through the hat and I don't like that. That's not too cool. That's like someone grabbed my head and you know push it down on my head. So what can we do about that? First of all, we're going to want to make a backup just like I showed you. Right click and copy it. Right click and paste it again. And I'll just rename it here so it says backup. Just so I know for my reference. Otherwise, it's a bit tricky to tell. And now I can begin by right clicking the hat and choosing edit. And by the way, you'll notice my camera is moving around. That's because I'm just so, I feel so natural when I'm using the Alt, Control, and Shift keys to adjust my camera. I recommend watching my video tutorial on the camera movement like that. If that's a bit tricky for you, view menu and camera controls. And yes, it's back on screen. You can click these little buttons to reposition the camera. Remember, 3D environment is what Second Life is. So you can zoom out and in. But I'm going to close that because I prefer using the keyboard shortcuts. It feels a lot more fluid and natural for me. So right now, holding Alt and clicking and zooming Alt and Control to orbit, just like that. What I want to do now is I want to get the hat looking natural on my head again. So with these arrows, the blue one is up. I can click that and drag it upward. And there, it looks better already. And notice how I was snapping it to the grid. There's this grid here, snap, snap, snap. This can be customized and you can turn the grid on and off. Notice it's off now, back on. You can also change some advanced options, such as how fine the grid is. If I change this to point 0.25, then when I'm using the grid, ah, it's a little, lot more little lines here. I can snap with greater precision or back to one as I had it before. Like that, you can change how transparent it is. If you think that it's too intrusive, now it looks a lot more faint. Or I can make it back to the highest opacity. So that all helps you. And what can also help you is you can change the ruler mode. Now in case you're wondering what this means, I think there's some borkage with it still. It may not work as desired, but it affects how these axes are oriented. Okay, these three green, the green, the red, and the blue arrows. And if you change it, you're going to notice that the arrows move a little differently. So that depends on how the attachment was created and how it was originally oriented. You'll notice that if I do it with my hair, which is also prim hair, I'm going to explain this a little bit more later, it will also change. 
So it all depends on how something was put together in world. But if you just have it on attachment, then blue will be the arrow pointing up. And reference mode. I think I personally find this more useful in world when I'm building things relative to each other. But go ahead and see what works best for you. These things are best done through experience once you learn and once you learn to change them and see how they work. But if I want to, for example, move it on a slightly tilted plane, then I can use that. And you notice also the attachment, the grid is no longer in absolute numbers, it's in fractions of itself, like 0.5 of what the of the dimensions of how wide the hat is. So go ahead and do some experimenting there. Now I can also, as I was saying, attach, I should actually be up on the posing stand because that would give me a more neutral stance. As you can see, it might be even easier to attach, or I mean adjust my hat on here. If I want to change the angle of my hat, you can do this. It's a little tilted down by rotating it. So now you notice instead of arrows, you have these little circly thingies. And you can click and spin it a bit. If you snap, if you move outside the edge of the circle, then it's going to snap to its own sort of grid with the rotations. You see the angles, degrees. If you're not big into math, don't worry. You can just use your eyes here. So I can make it a little less tilted, like that. But I also have to keep in mind, remember, that my hair might be sticking out the back. So again, position and move it up. There. It might be a little floaty, and sometimes you won't get exactly right, but it's better than it was before. So that's a little bit too high. I think I'll position a little bit lower without the grid, like that. And that's pretty good. That's a fair choice. <laughs> and the posing stand, of course, helped me. The posing stand is also good if you're going to wear something like a watch, whoop, sorry, or uh, bracelets. Yeah, let me zoom back in. Next, I'm going to show you hair. So keeping hair in mind, I can change my uh, avatar. I can completely change it right when I'm still on this posing stand. In inventory, I can click and drag and move it over. I like this one, Victorally. This one has pretty nice hair. So click, drag, and then release when it's on top of your avatar. And you'll notice I'm bald for a moment, but I should be endowed with new hair soon. That's part of the miracle of Second Life. Well, that's a, a light spear. That's a transparent attachment. By the way, yeah, I should show you about those. If there's attachments you have that cast light on you, or things like eyebrows, and lots of hair tends to be transparent. It can be a tricky to select, but if you go to View and Highlight Transparent, or use this shortcut, Control-Alt-T, then you'll see it. So you see I have ooh, two light balls. Detach and detach those for now, so you can have a more fair look at my face. I just test, uh, just turn that back. Notice everything that's transparent is slightly tinted red, especially those things in the background. You can go off. And now, it's very fancy, very cool hair. I have both a hat and hair. It's both combined, actually. These are both one attachment, and some people provide that. Sometimes the hair and hat is separate. Well, I'm going to show you how to modify the prims on this hair. So, just open this folder. And I want to find, where's the hair? The hair is probably, okay, Victorian hair with hat. And again, do what's smart. Right click, copy, right click, paste. So I have a backup there. I'll just rename it. Always, always good. It takes a few seconds. It can save you a lot of heartache in case you, you botch something up. Let me just go to the end there. Wow, this is a long name. Ooh. I'm just gonna go scroll back. Okay, backup. I know I truncated a bit, but anyway, so I'm going to be modifying a prim on the hair. You can edit individual parts on the hair. And how do you do that? And this applies for all attachments, by the way, not just hair. Edit linked parts right here. You're going to want to click that, so that's checked. So that changes the editing mode, and now you can focus, instead of the whole hat and hair, or whatever attachment it is, you can focus on a single one. If I want to change the color, of this hat band, I would just click on that and notice how only this hat band is glowing. And then I can go ahead to the texture tab and I can change the color. As sacrilegious as it is, I could make it sort of yellowy and select it. And there it's changed. 
I can also adjust these hair strands if I felt this one's cutting through my glasses. Okay, and if you're having problems zooming closer, in another video tutorial I cover this, but just quickly, view and zoom in and out, and zoom default will reset your view. So let me go, control zero, zoom in, and that will help you get into the finer details like that until I'm done. So now I click this strand because I'm editing the linked part, which is specifically one part of this many primmed hair. And then I can either, I can move it off to the side, so it's outside, and that looks okay, I guess. I can move it back, remember with the arrows. It's a good idea, as you notice what I'm doing is I'm moving it a bit and I'm repositioning my camera slightly each time so I can see things fairly from all angles because sometimes things look good from one angle but not from another as I'm sure you've seen with trick model photography. But that looks alright and for an extra taste of punch I'm going to change the color to green. <laughs> so that looks kind of stylish and it's just kind of clipping my hair. And when I want to reset my zoom, view menu and zoom default or just control 9. And the difference between this zoom and the sort of zoom you do with alt and clicking to zoom is because this can get closer in a number of cases. You notice right now with the normal alt zoom I can't get any closer but control zoom allows me to do that. So that's very useful for knowing this. You can change other individual prims and you can select multiple prims by clicking and holding shift. So now I've got several prims selected. I've got a whole bunch. And if I want to, I can change all their color at once, like more blondy. But I don't want that. So I'm going to cancel that. Also note that you can undo changes to movement after you've made them if you've repositioned or resized something for each individual prim. So that saves you sometimes if you don't want to restore totally from a backup. If I click this, and if I made it too big, say I stretched it, or actually I'm going to show you stretch later, <laughs> what a good usage. So say I reposition it right outside, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't want to do that. I made a mistake. The funny thing is you can actually keep editing other parts. I once did a video tutorial on this as well, because each prim has its own undo stack. Meaning, if you change other parts, they have their own successive lines of memory as to what you can do. Notice I changed that. So, in most programs, it's a bit confusing. You'd expect undo to undo that last change. But it doesn't do that, because that's not how Second Life works. And I do wish undo could be more useful, but until that time, you can select that part, and because it has its own undo stack, edit menu, and undo. We'll move it back to where it's supposed to be. You notice it still looks like it's hanging, but once I click outside, then it's repositioned correctly. I recommend doing this with something that you don't cherish so much, so you don't, you don't botch it up, but nevertheless, as a fun experiment, watch, watch this, I can move parts, I'll just hide that for now, and each has its own stack. And control Z for undo, I'm just using the shortcut, control Z for undo, control Z for undo. That can save you some heartache. And just remember, if it doesn't look exactly positioned after you do undo, just click outside or click another prim like this, for example. Undo and click another prim and then it will update it. <laughs> Save yourself some heartache. So now we have our head with our hair and it's slightly changed. It was fun showing you this. Okay. Oh, by the way, there is a great tutorial by Natalia Zelmanov. Check it out search her name out. I really recommend her blog and all the great tutorials she does on attachment, fashion, building, exploring Second Life, newcomer friendly stuff, and so much more. It's always great to spread the knowledge. Now is almost the part where I'm going to show you how to get to the necklace that I was telling you all about. <laughs> okay, you'll notice also I have a watch right here, and a watch is a great example of when you're going to want to adjust something in a posing stand, because you notice right now my arms are kind of askew behind my back and my arm, this arm is kind of in my side. So that's awkward. And again, just click and drag to res the posing stand, and then right click and stand on it. And if I wanted to adjust this watch, by the way, it's one of my favorite possessions in Second Life. It is incredibly well detailed. It's the work of Cottontail Muramachi. And then I can easily reposition it. And of course, I spent a lot of time before this show <laughs> repositioning it, and it's as close to 
perfect as I could get it. That may change in the future. But now, the necklace. So thank you, Harmony de Chanel, for this necklace. I'm going to click and right click and wear it. And I haven't worn this before. It's actually the first time you're seeing this live on camera. Okay, it fits pretty good. Sometimes, depending on your avatar proportions, stuff will not fit as well. But I do notice right here that if I zoom in, see this is what it's useful. Part of it is kind of in my neck, and it's too, it's it's too much to the back. So I can resize it as well. And wow, these are nice seeds, mm, melons. Right click and edit. I could reposition it, and another way is I could resize it. So. Remember what I told you about copying, pasting, and making a backup, which I already did. I just got to keep reminding you because it's so useful and it'll save you so much time. Time is good. Okay. And I can stretch now. So by stretching, I'm able to, you see these outlined gray boxes, and I want to get in a good angle, so I'll hide that. I can stretch this. Click, drag, and again, it will have a grid. I can make it a super big necklace. I won't go too carry cartridge with this, but about there or so. And you notice it's also off aligned now. So I click this, and using the skills we learned earlier, I can reposition it back. Just look at it from different angles. And I can move it slightly down so it sort of touches my chest but doesn't go quite through it. And this can be one of the most difficult parts because you want to have a good balance where it's not cutting through your avatar, but it's sitting gently on you. Okay. And if these green, these blue glowy things are just too much of a pain, I think there's ways you can sort of mitigate them. Show hidden selection, or well, that would actually make it worse, or in some cases. But show hidden selection, actually, this is good because it lets you see through. See, it's kind of like x-ray vision. If I turn it off, then I can't see what's behind my neck. But this will give me tools menu, show hidden selection. Good idea what's going on. Maybe familiar to some people uh, who are well acquainted with other 3D applications. Okay, the glow is a bit too much. I'm pretty sure there is a way to work around that. Let me do some research and share it with you. Anyway, so you can look at it without the glow. And it's sort of hanging, and I know gravity would have more of an effect. But it looks pretty good. As you can see, I've just resized this necklace. I'm now in position to teach you <laughs> about buying and wearing something such as shoes. And this is a very, very common example. Here at Tesla Mile, she makes some really, really nice, the finest shoes in Second Life. Well, among them, certainly. There's a lot of great options, and I really like her scalp do work. Right here we have sort of a pink to fuchsia. Thanks to everyone who corrected me that it's not fuchsia. I really appreciate that. <laughs> That's one of the great things about putting my pronunciation out there on the line. So if I was to go to a store, as you might, and buy some shoes like this, even if you're a guy, you can do this in Second Life. Isn't that great? <laughs> I can right click and buy them. Now this is the whole process illustrated, and I'm gonna show you how to fit them. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and buy them. And okay, great. Yeah. So in my inventory right here, I will see, yeah, the Tesla shoes that I bought, keeping the name in mind, and it comes in a box. So I'm going to need to unbox this. Very basic skill. Click, drag, and res it. And then right click, as you can see, and open it. Open the box. Then I can go to copy to inventory. Or I could just have clicked copy and wear, but this is all right too. No worries, no worries. Just close that, it's a landmark advertisement in case I ever want to come back here. And then right here, I can click and select everything, hold shift, just these wearable parts. So this is the shoe attachment part that goes on your avatar, and these are the attachments. And they work together to enhance your feet. And I right click and, oh, I can't do that. Hmm, that should be possible. But anyway, Normally, you can double click this or right click and wear. And then I can click this and click this and then wear both of them at the same time. This will replace my existing shoes. Ooh. Sometimes it gives you an error message. Just try again. And then I'll just zoom closer to see what they look like. Okay, well, they look, they look pretty good. My pants have gotten kind of fuzzy. 
Okay, I'm going to get outside actually and get back on the posing stand. You notice how handy that is? If you're having trouble seeing, go ahead with the posing stand inventory. And posing stand again for the win. Okay, come on. Our script's disabled. Oh, well, that's not going to do me any much good. Let me teleport back to my home. And then I can show you how that all works. Let me tell you about size zero and what that means. You're often going to come across that wording if you're buying shoes, like right here, size zero. I know a lot of people, they mention, oh, I wish there were more diversity in sizes. And certainly you can resize your attachments like I showed you to be customized. But it's just something very common in Second Life fashion. Standards, eh? So I'm kind of on the ground. I know that's hard to see. I'm going to right click myself and go into regular appearance mode. Okay, and I'm just going to hide that for now. And as I go and look at my shoes right there, you can see that legs, body part, shape, and here in the legs button, I'll click that. And size zero refers to this right here, foot size. If you have big shoes, for, I mean big feet, they'll go right outside the shoes and they're considerably harder to fit in. I mean, even resizing, that's gonna be pretty tricky. That's why when size zero, if shoes appear like they don't fit on you, make sure to change this to zero. And contact the vendor, the creator of the shoes, in case you have any serious questions wondering why it still doesn't work. Because there can still be some variance. That's one of the great powers and opportunities in Second Life is offering so much room for content creation. But yet, there are certain general guidelines which can help you sort things out. In addition, I'm going to show you why wearing this, okay, this is the shoe base, and this is the, the, the shoes themselves, the attachments. As you can see, if I detach it, it goes off, and I wear it, it goes back on. Remember that it's also often important that you don't just wear the shoes themselves as attachments, you notice, that you wear the base. And this is true for hair too. You may have noticed that hair has a bald base because it's prim hair. The primary reason, in case you're new to Second Life, is because non-prim hair looks like sad. It often does, and I'll illustrate this quickly by taking off this hair, detaching, because you see how cool that was, right? And now I'm bald because I'm wearing a bald hair base. And I go into appearance, and then I can go right into hair. So if I were to have actual hair come in and sprouting out, if it weren't bald, okay, I'm gonna unbald myself, hair volume, then you can see, even if I adjust it a lot, I'm gonna look all clown shoes in a bad way. It's really not gonna help me in a way that's not 80s televangelist style. <laughs> so I'm just gonna revert that, because I don't want that. And I'm gonna wear prim hair. Like for example, one of my favorites is the Radica. And again, since it has a, it has, it's going to have a bald base. If I look in here, I bet you, I bet you're going to say bald base, bald scalp right there. So that would be the same thing pretty much. Just bald, basic, simple. And then I'd be wearing, let me see, where, where did that go? I'll just look for it again. And right click and wear the wig and wear the bangs. And sometimes it's all in one. Some fancier hairstyles, as I've shown you, may even have the hat, like, the, where was that one? There's the really cool one that I got recently from Emilia Case. I really like this one. Is it singing Rain V2? Bald scalp, you notice, bald scalp, and sure enough, this shall be blush. Is it? Yeah, that's the one, it's the cool one. And it has the bangs from the other hair, so I want to right click and detach those. And this hair is glowing, it's wicked, and I had to reposition this as well. You notice it's very ornate and very elaborate, but it looks a heck of a lot better than non-prim hair. One more thing I need to show you is this upsurge in eyelashes, prim eyelashes, which are better than the default avatar ones. Another example where attachments really help. Let me seek something out and show you very quickly. Before I go further, let me remind you that, of course, a lot of the, what I've been showing you has been on a female avatar, but this also applies to male and non-human avatars, from furries to giant robots. These principles can be applied and combined in all sorts of ways to empower your second life. <laughs> and now that I'm not so smiling so formal again, 
Let me go ahead and check out this. This is, let's see, these are the prim lashes I was looking for, thanks to my wife for guiding me here. So I could select these dramatic ones, and they enrich your eyes, or they're meant to. Oh, they're all coming in three in a pack. Okay, bye. Like before an inventory, thanks. They should show up. Where are they? Right here. And then when I try to attach them, I'm going to move close to my avatar so you can see what happens when I try to attach them. They're probably going to attach to an eye spot. Let's see. Or not, because there's two of them. But we'll find out. Okay, uh, dramatic. Not flirty. Okay, they're sculpted prim, so they're going to take a little while to res. And then sure enough, right there, they are. Now they look pretty good. I can understand, and I zoomed in. There's times when they might need some adjustment. And again, this is a case where you really want to zoom in, probably, and be on a posing stand, because you notice it's moving about. It's tricky. Use all the techniques I showed you before. Of course, when you click and edit, then you freeze yourself. But nevertheless, it may still be easier. And then I could do things like resize them to make them crazy. I bet that would look really crazy. Oh, <laughs> not as crazy as I thought, but just undo that. And with these, they are transparent. And you know this because you can see through the, the back of them. And then view menu and highlight transparent. And of course they glow, like my hair, like so many other sorts of things. These are very popular now in World. Finally, and thank you graciously for joining me on this journey of advanced avatar adjustment. Ooh, okay, thanks Sasha, I gotta correct that link later. Well, I'm going to show you quickly how to recolor and modify an avatar, especially a non-human one like this, and furry avatars are also subject to this, where most of what you see is not your avatar mesh, but attachments that cover your body. A lot of people ask me, hey Torley, you made your avatar watermelon, how do you do it? And sometimes I get avatars which are already watermelon ice, and thank you for everyone, to each and everyone who's provided me with that. But you can also do this. If you can modify it, then you can right click and edit any part, and go ahead and start clicking. Notice I use select texture, and this allows me to select specific texture faces on objects on these prims, and go ahead and recolor them. So it's now a more green one, and that's exactly how I do it. I like to select multiple faces at once, not just one, and change them all in one fell swoop. That way it's a lot quicker. You can also add other things like shiny, you wanna make your head shiny. <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and add some texture. I've added a subtle green, because if there's one thing I can't stand, it's shiny that doesn't have a texture, because it looks so bland. Notice when I do put a texture on it, that it adds some richness, it adds some grit. And you can make it any more, oh, yeah, let's see, they've got more textures I have here that are crazier. Not that I'm gonna commit and stay with them. And it's taken some time to res, but here it comes, it's kind of blurry. But you get the idea. So go ahead with these principles and modify your avatars and do some clever customization to really personalize and make it your own because Second Life is avatar centric and your avatar is a representation of who you are in Second Life and everyone else gets to see that. So share that self-expression, customize, feel better about yourself and enjoy your Second Life.